and Sandra is here with us. And of course, America Reports airs on Fox News Channel live every weekday, 1 to 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Great to see you, Sandra. I'm so happy to be here with you, Guy. I opened the show today with a monologue about this narrative that just took flight, caught fire yesterday, alleging Mm -hmm. all the way up to the White House, with the White House pronouncing itself horrified by this, that our Border Patrol agents at the southern border were whipping Mm -hmm. illegal immigrants with whips. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's not true. It did not happen. And yet it was taken as true by many people who often have almost nothing to say about the border crisis. But it was an opportunity to go after the enforcers. And so they did. You just conducted an interview on TV Mm -hmm. with a senior Border Patrol official. And you touched on this issue. Just set this up for us. Who did you talk to earlier today? National Border Patrol Council Vice President Art Del Cueto. You've probably seen him on the Fox News channel. He's a pretty regular guest. Speaks very passionately about what's happening at the border. Matter of absolute urgency. He's also worried about the morale of these Border Patrol agents and everything that they are going through there. He pushed back hard against the criticism of these agents, what they are going through, and specifically the mainstream media claims that these agents are whipping migrants. Uh, He specifically on our program explained that these agents are not assigned with. Yeah, let's listen to it. This was Cut 28 just earlier on Fox News in this interview. What they were doing out out there was within policy. They were not whipping anyone. They don't carry whips. They don't get assigned whips. What they do is a training technique that has been shown to them to make sure that no one takes over their horse. It was to protect the horse to protect the rider and to protect the individual that was trying to cause chaos and knock down that uh, rider from that horse. So these were long reins. These were not whips. This was controlling the horse and the situation. This is how they're trained is what he just said. And yet, and I can imagine that he would be very worried about the morale because these men and women have been completely overwhelmed month after month after month. And a lot of the people who seem to not care or might even approve on some level of this massive surge of illegal immigration, they can't find themselves to really breathe a word about anything until there is a fake story that makes these Border Patrol agents look like slave drivers or something. And then everyone pounces. And to have the White House respond when questioned, um, Jen Psaki was asked about this, about this being such a horrific event, the footage that she claims she saw um, is brutal considering the Homeland Security Secretary under this administration, Alejandro Mayorkas. He was asked about the photo photo earlier today when he was down in Del Rio. He said um, that the the reporter asked him about the whip. He The reporter used the word rip, whip. He said the reporter was assuming the facts, suggesting that it was possible the agent was simply holding a long rein. So you've got Alejandro Mayorkas saying, let's deal with facts here and not emotions by all of us seeing this video. But then Jen Psaki asked about it in the White House briefing room, called it horrific, said there will be consequences for this happening. Um, And she was repeatedly asked by reporters, by the way, about these whips on Haitian migrants. Our concern as Americans should be that a White House is not defending these Border Patrol agents who are putting themselves in harm's way and putting themselves on the front line every single day. Absolutely. Art Del Cueto went on to say, as I just mentioned, that Border Patrol morale is very low right now and people are leaving the job, Guy, at a time where we need more of them. Uh, He said the administration is refusing to defend these agents that he said quite clearly, as he saw in that video, were using proper safety techniques in the field. Well, they're not just not defending them. They're hanging them out to dry, right? They're sort of saying, well, we need more information and we need the context. There's going to be, you know, an investigation. But the quote that you just read from Mayorkas has already elapsed because he was telling the truth. Mm -hmm. And then apparently someone got to him and he's now on the bandwagon of being horrified. Mm -hmm. So he was not horrified by what he saw. He Mm -hmm. said this is actually what they were trained to do. That was the statement yesterday. The New York Post had that story. Mm -hmm. And now apparently the White House is the word has gone out that we are all to be horrified by this thing that, according to Border Patrol, is what the training shows. And, you know, whips now they're saying, well, whether we call them whips or not, the optics are terrible. Well, I. Sandra, I'm sort of old-fashioned in this way. If you accuse people 
of whipping human beings mm-hmm. with whips and they don't have whips and they weren't using them against human beings, you can't just sort of let that slide as like, oh, well, maybe those little details don't matter. This other stuff still looks bad. Facts and truth have to matter yeah. if we're going to have a reasonable yeah. rational conversation about anything. Yeah, it, and it was all sort of in the same breath because he went on to say that we're assuming the facts involved here. We need to we need to investigate really what happened here. He said to control the horse, long raids are used, but we're going to investigate, he said, right. to ensure that the situation as we understand it, that they were doing the right thing. If it's anything different, he said, we'll respond accordingly. And when he was testifying before the Senate Homeland Security Committee today, he said he was horrified To see those images, to your point, saying, quote, we do not tolerate any mistreatment or abuse of a migrant, period. He did not say that was what happened in that video. But it it very much leaves the impression that that's what they think happened. And let's deal with the facts. Let's deal with the surge at the border, because we had we had the governor of Texas on at the top of our show today. And wow, when you hear the urgency in his voice and when you hear him standing there talking to local leaders on the ground, saying that this is a disaster that he's responding to. And those around him saying, the governor doesn't have to take the lead on this. This isn't his job. This is an administration job. This is federal land that needs to be protected here. Um, they need to step in. J- Joe Biden says, we're going take we're, we're going we're going to take care of the situation. Is there anyone right now, anyone, mainstream media anywhere, that sees an administration tackling this crisis. Or Where's Kamala Harris? Any of the crises. Well, she, I last saw her, she was flipping a coin at a college football game, wearing a mask outdoors at the 50-yard line. I know this is supposed to be in her portfolio. I have no idea what she's up to these days. And I'm glad that you brought up Governor Abbott in Texas. We played a soundbite yesterday from the Democratic mayor of this city yes. begging for the White House to do something and pay some attention. It's not a partisan thing. Henry it, Cuellar has been speaking up. Yep, Democratic member of Congress. Yeah. Exactly. People who are there looking at this with their own two eyes yeah. cannot avoid what is in front of them. And yet that seems to be an avoided strategy mm-hmm. from the White House and from the left broadly. And they all are just like, let's just bury our head in the sand, pretend like this isn't so bad. But now we've got this smear. Mm -hmm. Now I've got this slander on Border Patrol. Let's jump on that and at least indulge it. This is the thing. We need an investigation. Okay, fine. We have the video. We've seen it. I kept seeing the Twitter outrage yesterday and the, the trending topics, I was expecting to push play on this video and be disgusted Mm -hmm. by people just whipping other people. It's not it's not in there. Like, I don't know what there is to investigate. There's footage of what happened. Some people just manifested a storyline out of it based Mm -hmm. on nothing. I'm like, you know, I can see the we can see this video. It's not what you say it is. Mm -hmm. And yet that lie went all the way around the world before anyone stepped forward to correct it. And it seems like the administration has very little interest in correcting it because their base is now invested in this lie, mm-hmm. including a lot of the media. It's just and meanwhile you've got resources running dry. And we were t- we're not just talking to the officials on the ground there. We're talking to the local landowners. I mean, they're dealing with a crisis at that border, and it's only moving inland. And to Governor Abbott's point at the top of the the show today, he brought in to speak alongside him the Texas Department of Sa- Safety, saying this is a public safety threat. Um, and that is why they have been brought in there. I mean, th- this is consequences, long lasting consequences. When you look at the health of the migrants coming into this country, yeah, COVID the issues. economic resources yep. that they are going to tie up, not today, not for weeks, but for a long time to come, guy, uh, educational resources, um, employment resources, it's going to have long lasting effects. And we just still see thousands of those migrants pouring over the border. There are shortages of labor. In that area in Texas, Mm -hmm. there are shortages of food right now at grocery stores. There are immediate impacts. Then there's those long-term impacts that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And Sandra, I say this somewhat frequently on the air, uh, sort of on the spectrum of immigration policy as a conservative, I'm probably somewhat in the moderate camp overall. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, like I'm in favor of a dream act and that kind of thing. It drives me crazy when it's like somehow treated as not compassionate If I just believe, I'm sorry, these people do not have a right to be here. You can't just show up. We have unbelievable restrictions on legal immigration Mm -hmm. and even legal visits right now from allied countries. People can't visit. And starting in November, they'll have to show all this proof of vaccines, even if they're just showing up, you know, for four days at Disney World or something. 
And yet you have hundreds of thousands of illegal immigrants coming across the southern border every single month. And if you say anything about it, it's sort of like, oh, well, you're the bad guy. There's sort of like this sense like, oh, it's a little bit grimy to talk about. It's a, a tinge of xenophobia. No. It shouldn't be. Of course it not. It shouldn't be. In the, in the White House, our own Peter Ducey pressed Jen Psaki also on the COVID <laughs> status of these migrants coming in. I mean, here we're saying that international uh, travelers coming in have to show proof of vaccine yes. into this country, but yet you've got migrants pouring over the border illegally and the process is to see if they're showing any symptoms and then maybe do something about it. But testing, no, is not a requirement. Vaccine is not a requirement. And we're not even forcing them to get vaccinated. It's like, okay, you violated our sovereignty. You've shown up in our country. Mm-hmm. They're going to mandate stuff for American citizens and not mandate it for illegal immigrants mm-hmm. showing up voluntarily. The other thing, we'll talk about this in the next hour, too, that Saki said in response to Peter Ducey. Mm-hmm was just this mind-bending thing where she said, well, but we don't think it's the illegal immigrants aren't really going to be staying very long. I'm like, no, it's exactly backwards. The European vacationers are the ones who are going to stay for a few days. The illegal immigrants would very much like to stay here probably for as long as they're alive. Yeah, and of those 12,500 or so that are gathered under the bridge, I believe only 350 so far was the latest number that I saw have actually... Uh, been flown back. The other point that Governor Abbott also made, um, and we we took his words live as he uh, stood there and addressed the press at the border. By the way, no other cable news network did. We were the only ones. No, no, um, they're they're too busy covering the fake whip story. Correct. To listen to any facts. Correct. Um, he he made the case that the administration knew this was coming. Uh, he pointed to a campaigning Joe Biden who campaigned on open borders and then said these are the policies he campaigned on at play he is now attracting people from all over the globe we're seeing migrants he said from over 150 countries pouring over our borders he called the number of people crossing unprecedented and said quote the administration is doing nothing about it what he is doing He said he's organizing a more robust response at the border. He's shifting strategies where they're seeing breaches in the ability to cross over the border uh, where places that wasn't well protected before. They are shifting strategies. They are shifting resources. His characterization, though, it really struck me when he reached this point. Abbott said, we are witnessing chaos day after day after day. And you're not seeing Kamala Harris. You're certainly not seeing Joe Biden delivering a news conference from the border acknowledging this crisis. Well, Biden almost never takes questions on anything. I don't know where on earth the vice president mm-hmm. is. It's just like a Carmen San Diego right. situation with her half the time. But at least Greg Abbott, the governor of Texas, is stepping into the breach and doing something. Yeah. Someone is leading somewhere. And of course, Biden does spend some of his time attacking guys like Greg Abbott and Ron DeSantis. It's a separate issue. Sandra, by the way, I just for people who are listening on the radio as opposed to watching on the live stream at foxnation.com, I love that you are now repurposing your TV notes. She was reading because <laughs> during during the press conference, That's... you took notes from Greg Abbott you and you still have that folder. So you were able to verbatim quote the governor of Texas. That is some good <laughs> TV tradecraft right there, Sandra. Last question, totally separate issue, but also a very sad one that you guys have been all over in the last week plus and we talked to John Roberts about it yesterday, this missing girl and now yeah. uh, assumed to be a dead young woman, Autopsy Gabby Petito, happening right now, yeah. currently um, to confirm, you know, the worst, it would seem. Mm-hmm. The strange wrinkle now, really more than a wrinkle, huge development of the missing person of interest, the boyfriend. I mean, what does it take to become a suspect? And where do we think this guy is? So uh, the last that I saw, actually, as I was coming to your radio studio, is that all these social media tips, they're helping. They certainly helped find Gabby when, you know, the, the blogger, the travel blogger right. spotted the, the, the converted van on her video feed. I had right. her on the show yesterday. Um, they're getting a lot of tips and they're parsing through all those tips and they're going to find this guy. And hopefully we'll know this time tomorrow uh, that family, um, Gabby's family, will know um, the cause of death. I had Dr. Baden um, on the show today uh, talking about the autopsy report, what they're looking for. Um, but the fact that this guy got away, the fact that he came from home from a trip without her, yeah. wouldn't speak to the family, wouldn't speak to the police, wouldn't speak to the FBI, and he got away. 
gosh, help them. I know I know you're talking about Governor DeSantis down in Florida, and he's saying, well, we'll do whatever it takes to aid in the search efforts for this guy because they've got to find him. Like how you possibly lose track of that person. What a bizarre story. It is, like every little part of it. Yeah. Like the the further down the rabbit hole you go, it's like what? Every, what? Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. And it's Even Dr. Me. Bodden, we had Nancy Grace on the aisle said, we've covered so many missing person stories. This one is just it's just strange at every twist and turn. It really is. It is. And I know you guys have just been all over yeah. it on America Reports each and every day. Sandra, not the happiest subject matter no. today, but always happy to see you. Thank you. And you too. Hopefully we'll be seeing more of each other now that things are kind of hopefully getting normal-ish with COVID. Should I end with a go Wildcats? You got your Northwestern yeah. gear on yes, here today. Yes, I do. I came straight from the train, so I'm in my sort of like uh, train travel gear here. But yes, yeah, so go Cats, although it was a rough, rough weekend <laughs> down in North Carolina. Sandra, great to see you. Thank you, Guy. It's the Guy Benson Show. We'll be right back.